Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Backyard Brawl this Saturday. West Virginia heading on the road to play Pitt. You talk about underrated rivalry games. This is at the top of the list. Like as a young kid, this is one of those kind of games that got me in love with the sport of college football. Fired up that it's back. And I think this matchup in 2024, like, look, there's a reason that the spread's sitting at two and a half points. This is going to be a very fun game. Feels like it's going to be a one possession game. Want to get into, you know, some of the matchups and kind of key players in this football game. Now I want to start with Pitt. This is a new offense, and I give Pat Narduzzi really all the credit in the world for kind of recognizing where the sport of college football is going. Pat Narduzzi's had a ton of success in terms of how he's coached teams throughout the last 10 years, but he kind of knew he was getting left behind. And so on the offensive side of the football, he goes out, gets Eli Holstein in the transfer portal. But I think more importantly, you know, Cade Bell as the offensive coordinator. This is a pit offense that is almost unrecognizable from the 2023 season to now. And so they bring a lot of juice on the offensive side of the football. West Virginia, obviously a very strong rushing attack against the pit defense that kind of struggled to deal with the run against Cincinnati. I think those are where the matchups kind of lie. Really fired up to get into this one now before we do. And as always, most importantly, you know, for these rivalry games, let it fly in the comment section. A lot of different ways that you can see this game being played out. Can't thank you guys enough for all the support for these prediction episodes. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. And without further ado, let's get into this one. Let's start with this pit offense going up against a West Virginia defense that, look, I think the biggest matchup here is can West Virginia limit the explosive plays through the air? You look at Eli Holstein, you look at this pit offense. I mean, 41 and a half points per game. That's number 13 in the country. And they just played a Cincinnati team that I think is pretty damn good in the Big 12 this year. You look at Eli Holstein, you can tell this kid is a little bit more talented than some of the quarterbacks we've seen from Pitt the last couple of years. Transfers in from Alabama, big time juice in terms of pushing the ball down the field. But I think what's kind of stood out to me the most going back and watching that Pitt-Cincinnati game again is, you know, his ability to extend plays keep his eyes downfield and deliver good footballs. And I think the biggest key for West Virginia in this game is one pass rush. This was the biggest question mark I had for this West Virginia team heading into 2024. You go back to how we talked about this team in the summer, you know, we think they get better. They return a lot of guys from the 2023 season. But one of the big question marks was you know, who's getting after the passer, like who's pinning their ears back and kind of providing that pass rush that you really need to have a quality defense. And West Virginia, through for, through two games, hasn't sacked the quarterback once. And so if you're West Virginia, you got to figure out a way to not only get pressure on Eli Holstein, but you got to keep him in the pocket because he did a lot of damage in terms of extending plays, keeping his eyes downfield, and finding wide receivers kind of creating down the field. And so I think two keys for West Virginia, pass rush, keep Eli Holstein in the pocket, and I think finally – figuring out how to deal with Desmond Reed, who I think is a fascinating storyline. Follow Cade Bell from Western Carolina to Pitt. This kid at the running back position, he's not the biggest cat in the world, probably 5'8", buck 80, tops. He has so much juice. He's a former sub-11 second guy in the 100-meter dash. You see that kind of speed on the football field. And I think what's so fascinating is they find a lot of creative ways to get Desmond Reed the football. I mean, you see on the screen, 33 carries for 293 yards and a touchdown, but also out of the backfield as a pass catcher can have an impact on this football game. So you look at Pitt, you want to keep Eli Holstein in the pocket. You want to find a way to deal with a guy like Desmond Reed. Those are probably the two bigger storylines for West Virginia heading into this matchup. Now flipping sides here, West Virginia's offense I had a nice rebound game against Albany. I think that matchup against Penn State was inherently going to be very difficult. It's just a tough matchup for West Virginia. They want to run the football. They're running the football at one of the best front sevens, not only in the Big Ten, but in the country. And so West Virginia, when they weren't able to get that rushing game going, really struggled to have a lot of juice on offense. When you look at West Virginia, the biggest key to this football game is get that rushing attack going and then push the ball down the field. That was the recipe in 2023. You go back, West Virginia runs the football a lot, but when they do decide to throw it, they're going to try to hit explosive plays vertically down the field. And it proved to be a really good recipe for West Virginia, but that recipe is hard to implement when you struggle to run the football. 
And so that's by far the biggest key to the game is running the football against the pit defense that, oh, as much as their offense has been pretty damn good, the pit defense has been probably question marks is probably the best way to describe it. It's not the Pat Narduzzi defense we're probably used to seeing. I think a lot of that has to do with the offense running a little bit more tempo and putting up a lot more points. I mean, Corey Connor from Cincinnati ran the football for 150 yards last week in that football game. If you're West Virginia, got to get guys like C.J. Donaldson and Jaheim White going, and you got to be able to push the ball vertically down the field. When they were able to run the football against Albany, all of a sudden Garrett Green starts having a little bit more success as a thrower as well. One other note that I would have with West Virginia is you got to lean to Garrett Green and his skill sets. Uh, I want to see him outside of the pocket more. I want to see him using his athleticism. I felt like in that Penn State game, not only did they just not execute, I mean, like the muff snaps and the negative plays, that kind of killed West Virginia. But I think most, most importantly, I didn't feel like they let Garrett Green be the dynamic playmaker that he can be. And yeah, you might get some turnovers with Garrett Green, but you got to lean into what Garrett Green can do. And that is being an athlete, getting outside the pocket and using his legs. I think they need to do that against Pitt. Now getting into the pick and prediction here, two and a half point spread, West Virginia, two and a half point favorites heading on the road against Pitt. I'm going to go with West Virginia and I'm going to go with West Virginia because I think this is a pretty good team that looked a lot worse than they were against Penn State because they couldn't run the football. I think they're going to have more success running the football against Pitt. And as they have success running the football, that's going to open it up down the field a little bit more. And we know West Virginia can hit some explosive plays. I think they get better at wide receiver from what it was a disaster, in my opinion, in 2023. So if West Virginia can come on the road, run the football, start hitting some explosive plays, I think that's the key for this West Virginia offense. And you look at Pitt, I just have some question marks about the defense. Now, I think the offense is going to be really exciting. You look at that spread, 16 and a half, I think it's that spread for a good reason. I think there's going to be a lot of points put up on the, on, the, on the scoreboard, so to speak. And I think West Virginia probably just scores a, a little bit more points than Pitt. I think Pitt might be, and, and Pitt, Pitt fans, I would like to hear your kind of takes on this maybe a little bit one-dimensional in terms of Desmond Reed and Mumfield. Like I just, how many other playmakers, they got a really nice tight end as well. I think West Virginia probably has more avenues to move the football than Pitt does. And if you can limit the amount of times Eli Holstein can extend plays and push the ball down the field, I do think that's the key. Cause I think it was a little bit of an over-reliance on that against Cincinnati last week. I think West Virginia is more comfortable and a little bit more of a shootout game than Pitt. We'll see how this one plays out. Really hard to get a read on this football game. That being said, I think we're going to learn about both of these teams. Like, is West Virginia from real, for real after uh, a surprisingly good 2023 season? And how about this Pitt team? Are they taking a step in the right direction with this new offense and some legit dynamic playmakers on the offensive side of the football? I'm going to take West Virginia inside of a field goal here. That being said, Going to be a really fun game. Certainly going to be on one of my screens. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.